not counting down. No, it doesn't count down. <laughs> from the green room, but we should be live now. <laughs> no, I, there we go. Just because I said that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I'm the only one that sees that, which is unfortunate. <laughs> Just awkward silence. For I think it should be like a really cool, like movie little clicker, like ready, That'd be cool. go or something like that. We'll suggest that. Anyway, hi everyone. <laughs> we should be live. <laughs> we just kind of came in from our conversation from uh, from what they call the green room just prior to being passed over to this. Uh, so welcome to another uh, Cyber Social Hub cast. Um, great to have everyone here. So thank you for so much attending. Whether you're watching live or later on in the in the replay, uh, welcome. Um, also, let me walk everyone through a little bit of housekeeping before I introduce my guest, whether she's on this side of me or this side of me. I don't know, uh, depending on your screen and how uh, Cradcast is, is positioning us. But down along the uh, the bottom bar somewhere in there, you're going to see um, ask a question um, so you can ask questions literally about anything that we're talking about, because um, uh, we have some interesting topics. It's a little like here and then there. It's going to be fun. Um, so feel free to ask questions because what happens is when you ask a question, it kind of bookmarks it. So later on people in the replay, if they wanted to ask the same question, they can just hit, Hey, see the answer. And it kind of fast forwards in the place to where that answer is at so they can see them. So we highly encourage it, not asking it in the main chat. Um, but if you do, we can, we can bring it over that to there um, and try to ask it down there. So, uh, and, and, I think that's the the basic stuff. Oh, to chat also down there in the in the bottom somewhere, you'll see uh, a little thing which I I I think it's funny how Crowdcast does it. They they're very positive. It says say something nice. So you click down there to say something nice, and uh, it, it appears in uh, in chat. And you can do that in any time that you like. Okay, and with that, she's sitting there very patiently. Oh, I am. <laughs> As I as I stammer along here, um, so welcome Amber Schroeder, who's the CEO of Paraben Corporation. For those of you uh, who have, don't know Paraben Corporation, you should absolutely get to know Paraben Corporation. You totally should. <laughs> I'm biased, but you know, right, right. So how are you? How how are things there in uh, in the paraben world, especially in the crazy times of uh, coronavirus that we're in right now for you? Um, so we're doing well. And my favorite part of coronavirus is everyone washing their hands more because I was big on washing hands in the first place. So <laughs> big fan, big fan. I'm big, big at being clean. So, you know, um, that and uh, I have the new mantra that says it's every day is casual Friday. So I get to sport my my rock star nerd t-shirt. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I do like ACDC as well. So it kind of works out for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, otherwise everyone's healthy and well and we hope everyone else is also healthy and well. So, you know, you make it through. It's about innovation. So absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of weird because you know a lot of times when we talk, it's in uh, in person at a conference or in, yeah. it's not happening right now. Um, so this is kind of the the new norm, which is the the, the video talks. Um, so yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, part of the reason I wanted to, wanted to have you on is um, you know tell us a little bit for those of you. I guess let me take a step back for for those people that don't talk to you often. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started with number one, Paraben Corporation and in digital forensics just in general? So um, I have been in this space for 30 years now. So everyone should just be, she looks so young. Uh, sunscreen people, ginger. So. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I started really young. So I started when I was a teenager and um, I worked my way up in another company that specialized in cryptography. So we can just play that whole guessing game there. <laughs> and as I worked my way up, by the time I was in my early 20s, I was a VP there. That was my title. And I had helped design a new tool for them. And then um, there was a conflict and they said my customers were not super rock star about a woman. And so they let me go. And I said, well, that totally didn't work. 
<laughs> because I had been with them for 12 and a half years and I really love digital forensics. I thought it was amazing. It's the closest I'm ever going to get to being Wonder Woman because uh, you can't walk around in that outfit. Even during coronavirus, it's awkward for your neighbors. So <laughs> keeping that in mind. It um, really depends on your neighbors. <laughs> it, my neighbors would have found it awkward. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, hmm, it's been a rainy spring, so I'm not sure that's the best thing. Uh, as close as I get is wearing my Wonder Woman socks around. So uh, I stuck with digital forensics and I took Paraben, who was a shareware company, and I turned it around to being a digital forensic company. And we re released the first tool for mobiles um, at the end of 2001. And um, I was partnered with my husband at the time and then we had a divorce in there and we stayed together uh, as far as business partners for the longest time and since 2015 um 100 percent of paraben is all me as far as my i own it all but yeah you get it. <laughs> yeah awesome yeah that's See, right I'm, I'm full candor i'm a candor person <laughs> that's the way we are here on the hub we just yeah. what comes to mind and that, that, Good thing there's not a whole lot of FCC regulations on. Yeah, no. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it. We're, we're good. <laughs> we're good. So it's funny because I got started in mobile forensics. Oh, I'm going to go back here. Like yeah. 2003 ish, 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 something like that. Um, and one of the tools um, that we had learned originally back in the day was, of course, Paraben's tool. Yeah, uh, seizure. What's that? <laughs> probably cell seizure yeah it was called yeah. cell seizure i remember the box uh still mm -hmm. the graphic of the uh the, the non-specific type uh cell phone not what yeah. we think of when we think of a cell phone today right it's no it had buttons it had buttons <laughs> yeah, of, uh, of, of things and to type a text was miserable right? yeah. <laughs> i was so phone. fast on my t9 are you kidding i texted <laughs> like a rock star <laughs> Oh, even uh, even Megan's like, oh, the T9, terrible. Yeah. Jennifer's in there too. Hey, Jennifer, <laughs> sorry to miss that one entirely. Um, so, yeah, and obviously you've come a long way just from the old cell seizure days. Um, I don't mean data, but I mean it's. Well, it's. I mean it's true. We we started with PDAs back in the day, and we've really. You know, now we look at it and we talk, we've always liked to talk directly to the chips. Even when we did palms, we still talk to the chip. But um, we're doing chimp dumps for bypassing. Uh, we have root engines. Uh, right. We're doing, it's the amount of parsing that you're doing, whether you're doing it manually, uh, key recovery. There's just, there's a lot more, um, even though we only have two people in the cell phone space as far as Apple and Android um there's so much more data it's just grown exponentially the first time i talked about uh doing phones or mobile devices someone actually booed me they're like <laughs> what it was like having a heckler they're like there's no data different on those than the computer i felt like it was a Monty python moment like she's a witch burner <laughs> the earth is flat what are you doing <laughs> So um, it's amazing to see how different it is now where everyone's like, like, I totally do phones all the time. That's what we have. So, yeah, it's the majority of, of, of yeah. what you I, I haven't actually conducted a, a real case since well, it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, even then it was transitioning, transitioning over. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, more than phones, because um which I, I'm getting out of order from what I know I was originally said I was going to talk yeah. about out of the way it rolls when the conversation just goes, but you guys do drones too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was a, uh, so I've always, I just like tech. I'm just a nerd. Mm -hmm. I really am. I match my shirt, but um, we really got into IOT. So we process like uh, fitness bands, uh, echoes, and drone data too. And I don't know if people really think about us for drone data because I don't know if it's just because I can't fly them, so I don't get as excited about it. I flew one, we did some test data, I crashed one. It's a really expensive testing round if you're a bad pilot. I just want to say that. It is. I have a little setup just literally on the floor charging, praying the weather in Ohio stays nice for more than 30 yeah. seconds. 
at any given moment. Oh, yeah. We've uh, kind of had the same problem too. I enjoyed um, all the IoT things. That's one of the things uh, now with COVID and a lot more remote training, we're actually going to be launching an IoT training class online this year. So we thought that was a really great way for people to get distance learning about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great because you guys are kind of right there. I mean, as as especially things with with COVID have has changed. Uh, and I hate talking about it because but it's just there. You yeah. can't ever wherever you turn. Oh, COVID! Right, can't go do that. But you guys <laughs> have you know your online training is really building. Um, yeah, you know, we and, just released the class yesterday. Yeah, and then the um, your webinar presence has also been picking up. So if people want to catch you, I mean, obviously you can. Uh, just follow your social media feeds. Um, and it seems like you've been doing webinars every week there or so. It's, it's almost that it's, yeah. it's one of the, so I never gave a webinar. I gave my first one. I think it was <laughs> at the first of last month or something. Um, just because it's very different talking to a camera that just has a blue glow than a person. <laughs> So when you're trying to teach materials, it makes it a little different. I've had to like, I put little pictures of people behind my camera. So it feels a little more interactive, even though they're static. Um, so hopefully the webinars aren't dry and boring. Um, I took my IOT Barbie and she sat back there for a whole webinar. She's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, yeah, that works. Why not? Yeah. You, Tricks you, you, the trick. I know. I, I know, know if you a little bit of my background. I was, I worked radio for seven years, so I was, I felt mm -hmm. like I was talking to myself all the time. So, you know, <laughs> get you to you it. Have a personality I probably, probably <laughs> was. Yeah, I probably really was. Nobody, <laughs> just the way it works. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, uh, get away from the DFIR stuff for just a second. Um, I follow you on social media. Um, I see that you've been doing some experimentation um, not with, uh, you know, uh, COVID no. or anything like that, but it's more of a coping mechanisms for, for people. Uh, what is it that you've been experimenting with? So for the first time ever, I have made my own cheese from scratch, which I know people are probably thinking, cheese? Uh, so the little known fact is while I was still at that other company working uh, full time, I went to school in the evenings uh, and I got my culinary degree, <laughs> which oh, wow. people... so like, you're like a certified chef or something, right? Well, I don't yeah. know the difference between whether yeah. you call it, so. I, I thought about wearing my chef's coat because I do have them. Just the hat. Um, I did. So I'm a tall person. I'm five foot ten. Those hats, because you had to wear the like the straight up ones, um, were so obnoxious because when you walk by a big commercial kitchen, your hat would get swept up in the hood uh -huh. if you were super tall. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, that's really annoying. <laughs> so I I started wearing the baker's cap so I could like do the side thing just because then it wouldn't get swept up uh, as often. But mm. there you go. But yeah, I started making cheese. My first one was uh, fresh mozzarella, and it was fascinating. Really? Then, yeah, like, because you've seen the people and they stretch it out and you're like, ooh, fancy. You're not supposed to touch it a whole lot. If you touch it too much, then it gets tough. It's kind of like bread dough where you would over need bread dough since everyone's making bread right now. Uh -huh. um, that was one of the things. So I made fresh mozzarella and then um, I made a fresh tomato sauce and I made a uh, fresh dough as well. And I did margarita pizza because uh, who doesn't love that? Nice. Um, my family has enjoyed it. I wouldn't <laughs> know where to start with cheese. Was, I mean, it's not like you went out to the cow itself, right? I no. Mean, I it's <laughs> not a gallon of whole milk. Like it Betsy's was, gone, hey. Um, yeah, it takes up. one gallon of milk to make a cheese ball that's about the size of two fists. A full gallon a of milk. A full gallon. It does not make as much cheese as you think it does. Huh. Last so, week I made ricotta. So I've done two cheeses. Really? So, I mean, okay, this is going to show. I know nothing about cheese. It's very, very. <laughs> Everyone's like, are we really talking about cheese? And yes, cheese? that's why we came up with this awesome title. Who cut the DIR cheese? I thought that was it's different. Who's talking about cheese and digital forensics right now? I will guarantee no one. 
That's right. We're trendy munchies. <laughs> right. <More munchies. laughs> if somebody does a clip moment down there at the bottom, there's a little button called clip moment. Uh, use it sparingly. <laughs> what that does, Amber, I don't know if you know this. No. Does, for anyone in the room, I guess, also, it's a clip moment. It'll create like a 15 second clip of whatever we're talking about right at this moment with them, when they hit that button. Or you can actually do it in the replay as well. And then it takes that little clip and we'll post it out to social media, uh, to what, who's ever doing it in the in the chat, to their social media. It's used obviously for engagement, which is kind of cool. But just don't catch me because you know how you catch those stills while I'm like, they're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just watch that. That's all I ask when you when you do that. <laughs> but so, cheese. We start with milk. Back to it. So milk. Um, so when you make ricotta, it's only two things. It's milk and citric acid. And she, oh, sorry, and salt. Oh, salt. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Salt but uh, you literally just put it in a gargantuan pot and you have to bring it up to 180 to 185 degrees. And yeah. it starts to separate and create the curds. The tough part about ricotta, because I was very frustrated with it, which just like we talk to our computers, I talk to my pots when I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and I was having a WTF moment that says, what's happening with this cheese? I'm like, I planned lasagna. I already made the sauce. I did everything else. So I was ready. Yeah. And I made the kasha bread too. So I was like, it's oh. working. And um, you can't stir it. Ricotta, oh. you don't stir as you're making it. And so you just have to sit there and wait. And I'm like, what happens if it scorches? Is it going to wreck my cheese? And scorching is when it burns on the bottom. Yeah. Um, I sat there for an hour to make this cheese because I was so... An hour. And I'm like, let it happen, let it happen. It <laughs> only made this much cheese the size of one fist. That's it. It made enough for one lasagna. And hey, that's all you yeah. need. How awesome. Now yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm to, I, yeah, I'm sorry. And it's all Italian because I'm only I only know how to make Italian cheeses. Um, I haven't got to I really like a good sharp cheddar and I don't know how to make that. So <laughs> yeah. I, I see now I'm I'm tempted to try it. But I'm gonna end up. It'll come out with this big charred ball of. I would need it then. Goo. <laughs> yeah. No. So what's that? The difference in that one in um uh, uh mozzarella. Yeah. So you add a a coagulant essentially to mozzarella, which allows it to become that ball, and um so it has an extra chemical that goes into it to make it. So it's okay. I got a cheese kit and yeah. It's if if I cruise over to uh paraben store, I can't buy cheese though, right? You do not buy cheese. I, I could probably sell my jam. I'm a big, I also make my own jam. I had that jam. It's uh, yeah. yummy. I make a strawberry peach jalapeno jam. That's pretty fantastic. So <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> See, the rare things you don't know when you're watching a, a random webinar from a company, you think you're just going to learn digital forensics. And now everyone's going to think, I can make cheese. I, I, yeah, can I might be able to do that. Yeah. I'm going to try it. And if you do try it, all I ask is you send us emails. Oh, I want to see it. Or pictures. We, we want to see. I want to do a show me the cheese moment. That is totally <laughs> good. To show me the cheese. I got to see it. Right, right. No one thinks about it, but like at PFIC every year, I always uh, hand make my speakers a thank you because I think it's super important to really appreciate them. And so I've done jam. I have my own barbecue rub. Uh, I've done spicy nuts. Um, <laughs> let's see. I've done variety thing cookie, my chocolate chip cookies. That's been that had a comeback. I had two rounds of it. So they got miniature ones and big ones because yeah. I have a proprietary chocolate chip cookie recipe. It took me two years to make the perfect cookie. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've had the cookies and I've had the jam. So I see. And, the jam. And I'll tell you right now, everyone out, it, it's it's wonderful. Highly <laughs> recommend it. But you can only get that unless you're a speaker at one of her. That's own. true. You really have to push yourself <laughs> out there to try to speak. Right. There, there's a hint. You got to go speak in order to do this. So, yeah. Um, also, again, I want to remind everybody, I, I know we haven't really talked about anything to ask a question unless there's a boiling point yeah. or anything like that. But there's a button down here called somewhere. Ask a question. So feel free as we get into this. Uh, uh, go a little further. But we do want to talk about speaking events. Yeah. At, uh, if they do want to get 
a cookie or the jam. You have an event every year. Um, and I, I've gone the last couple years. And to me, it's a smaller type event, but I love it. Absolutely love it because of the, the you know, there's 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 different spectrums, right? Um, you've been to all kinds of events yourself. I have. I go to lots. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I when I yeah anyway work for that company that you had worked for, is that you know there's massive events um, where it's great. I mean the networking, everything's great, but some of that little that smaller type one on one, it, it feels that way. It's that uh, that that. You can go up to the speaker at any time. You you see the speaker still walking around uh, type of event. And you have one of those every year. Tell us about that. So uh, PFIC is Paraben Forensic Innovation Conference. So it's pfic-conference.com. Mm. Um, it's designed to be intimate. So we actually got to a point that we were getting really big um, where we had hundreds and hundreds of people. And I did the exact opposite of what most people do in this space. I cut it back. <laughs> um, and I did it on purpose because I think it's really hard to learn when you're in a classroom with, you know, 400 people and you're like, I totally didn't get it. Or I'm way too intimidated to raise my hand and go, what was that? I have no idea what you just said. Right. Um, but being kind of an introvert naturally, it's one of those that I want to make sure that you can kind of pull them aside or we always do casino night. I don't know what's going to happen when we do it live again in 2021 because of whatever health concerns. But we always try to make it where speakers are there to just sit and chat with you because a lot of us don't get that opportunity and we'd love to. It's mm -hmm. like, well, here, let me let me hear your question or here, let me sit next to you and actually have a longer conversation than what do you do? What do you do? What do you want? What do you want? OK, and you're done. It's like I've never been a quickie on relationships, um, so I wanted to get him to start and kind of move forward. Right. Um, someone's going to probably cut that one part. <laughs> <laughs> there she is in the media. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So that's what the event's designed to. So this year, uh, because of the current health concerns and everything, we decided to take PFIC virtual and allow lots of people to log in, but I'm still keeping it with our same style. So we'll have a little networking thing at the end and people might be able to guess what my recipe will be this year because we're doing mocktails and cocktails. Oh. And because uh, I, have, I have learned some mixology through the years and I've got some really good Fojito and mojito recipes. We decided they were the um, <laughs> the neutral gender cocktail. <laughs> so um, that's what we'll be mixing up and and just chatting with people at the end of a great day of presentations. <laughs> oh and yes, indeed, they are delicious. I see Megan, yeah, down there. She's yeah. she's happy. She's like, yes, <laughs> they're fantastic. And yeah. you can mix them with mint or basil. So I'll get you all like a little excited about it. <laughs> now, I I have put a uh, and we're new to this platform. Granted, we we've done just a couple of the of this, and this is a Crowdcast that we're using. If you're whether you're joining from the Cyber Social Hub itself or from the the Crowdcast, so there should be a button somewhere. It says PFIC Conference. Yeah, I, I'm not rich sure which one it is because it's always backwards, but that if you push said button, um, it should take you to the PFIC um, where you can get some more information about the conference um, and learn all about it. And uh, yeah, the full agenda is up right now. So you can see some of the great speakers that are going to be there. Um, people can enroll. And the best part is if you enroll this year um, and pay the fee, you get that credited to the 2021 enrollment. So that way you kind of get a, a discount to go to both. So, so I won't get one almost. So if I registered for the virtual one, I'm credited also for. A yeah. So it's only $99 to attend the virtual one. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can, when you attend, if you go to the live one in 2021, you get $99 off your enrollment. So, and then in wow. 2021, we'll have build day again, which is super cool where we build raspberry pies. Uh, not rolling pies but <laughs> oh that's right i don't think i even have one here there's a bunch <laughs> of like 
back in my shop here. So <laughs> I should have one ready. Like, yeah, we can do both kind of pot. So cool. <laughs> Don't try to eat it. It's crunchy yeah. and not awkward. very delicious. Yeah, awkward. not at all. Tooth loss, not decay, just loss. <laughs> right. Wait. So, so we're excited for it. That's 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 pretty cool. So, um, and it, it it used to you had it in a couple different locations, right? But yeah. Park City was last year, right? Park City, I so I'm from Utah, um, and it's I love the mountains. I think it's fantastic. I think it's yeah, a beautiful, it's beautiful venue. The hotel I found there is fantastic. Every room is a suite. So you can't beat it. And they give us the best room rate. It's like 110 bucks and no resort fee, no parking fee. So there are no hidden fees you're used to seeing. So it's very affordable for people to go because the goal is to get great training. Um, and some of our speakers stayed with us for virtual, but the agenda is full. And then some of the others rolled over into 2021. We do the first day longer training sessions. So there are four hour plus sessions. And then the second day we go to the one hour formats and then they kind of go throughout and then we record it too, because not everyone wants to sit there for that long. Right. So it's, it's, it's a, a lot of interaction too. And kind yeah. of like, a, oh. almost like a, <clears throat> even the online, a social community. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the goal is to still have that, like be willing to go and chat with someone and, and have it be friendly and, and casual. Hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome. And so, uh, what are the planned dates for that? Do you have them? We up? are September 22nd and 23rd. Okay. So, so that will be days. live streaming. Yeah, those two days. That's great. Um, so they can just pop on, and if they miss something, can they, they watch yep, a recording? Yeah, we'll have the recordings available by the great. following week. So good to go. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So they can pop in and watch it at any time. Very yep. cool. So obviously... Um, you make forensic software. We haven't really talked about that a whole lot, except that you know, you, you run Paraben. <laughs> um, and <laughs> so I'm um, hoping I'm going to pull this button away or attempt to pull this button away for the moment. I'll leave it up for a few more. Um, but tell us a little bit about what Paraben offers um, the digital investigative community. What, um, what resources do you have at, um, that really will help them out. So um, one of the things that we decided to do, so, you know, this, this global pandemic is new. We never would have thought this is going to happen. And my big reading area is apocalyptic books. I love zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it was, I'm almost a little disappointed. We don't have zombies, just a tiny <laughs> bit, just a tiny bit. But um, it was one of those that in doing it, we obviously make E3, uh, forensic platform. That's the name of our suite. It's one platform that does everything from computers to mobiles. Um, but we also put out uh, during the last two months, we put out a special free version of it as well um, that does certain specific things for processing. So you can process, I think, EML files, SIM cards, uh, I think SQLite. I don't have the list off the top of my head, so I'm being quizzed. But you get specific types of evidence that you can process and there's no fee to you. And the goal is to get you familiar with an interface. It's super easy to use. It works left to right. Many people might already know I am naturally uh, dyslexic, so I do everything backwards. So I try to always keep the learning process very simple so it can follow an SOP and you can write an SOP if your organization doesn't have one. So a lot of people can get up and running in less than eight hours of training online and, and get going. But our goal is to make sure we're supporting the community. Uh, after 30 years, I'm obviously very committed to this space. I always have been, right. I haven't been like jumped on and, and created into some weird alien that says, oh, forget this. It's not about the people. Cause I know it's about the people. Digital forensics has always been about the people and yeah. there's an obligation. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Now, and I've I've used your tool, obviously, yeah. uh, not not just back in in uh, the <laughs> day when we first started. Yeah. yeah, not back then, but modern version of it, um, and it's really intuitive of how it's laid out. Um, you know, uh, it's got it's got a natural flow to it, uh, which makes things uh, a, a lot easier. So, you know, especially, you know, um, some of the examiners 
um, that, and, and we all know one tool just does not do. No, you need more than one. Everything. Yeah. Um, but for examiners that are very extremely uh, uh, budget conscious and they get one choice, um, my recommendation, again, my recommendation would be use a tool like yours because you get a little bit of, you get mobile, right? You get what? the computer aspect, you get the IoT aspect. And now email, I think yeah. that's a good one too. Email, internet data. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's, it's that all encompassing tool where you don't have to learn a million different workflows when you're, when you're switching back and forth, you have one. one. It's okay. Ask my wife, I am a creature of habit. It's like, <laughs> where is the email button? <laughs> I think everyone is. And I do think that having a consistent workflow also makes you produce better data um, because your brain isn't constantly going, where is this button to process that NTFS, Linux, Mac? It's like, nope, it's it's the same thing. And mm -hmm. that's what really makes us a science is that consistent workflow. So I appreciate that. That's a huge deal because I, I want to make it something that digital forensics should be attainable to anyone who's willing to take the time to just learn. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we're magicians. That would be cool. But we're not. Right. We're, at the end of the day, we're a type of scientist. Just exactly. no white coats. It's, yeah. yeah. Now I put a quick, uh, again, we're over time. I never remember. Uh, I put a, a link down to it, the call to action button to, to link for anyone interested in, in, in just taking a look at it. But um, so we mentioned also that uh, this in, in the title was uh, some tips and tricks. Uh, so if what what do you think your number one tip i'm not putting any pressure on it, it can really be no, number a, well, <laughs> doesn't have to be number one tip number um, 416 yeah, is, yeah. Uh, of when it comes to let's, let's just cover like, like any type of of digital forensics or uh digital investigations let's kind of start there I'll, I'll let you lead with maybe your top uh several that you have so um, my general tip for everyone is you have to use more than one tool. And I understand when you don't have a budget that that's very hard, then pick a tool and pick maybe open source tool as your secondary. And then make sure you test the two of them, know what they are, but you should always have more than one tool. Uh, there are options out there. And if you have a tight budget, don't blow it all in one place. My mom always told me that this is, mm -hmm. you know, your allowance, don't go to one store and spend it all there. You know, you gotta, you gotta spread it out a little bit and you'll end up getting a better value from it. Um, I think my computer tip, it's all about triage. And I say that because when you process a computer going through and going through a full file system process at the front end, um, is difficult. It takes a long time. Drive sizes are huge, etc. But if you triage that out, you get a ton of data. It's probably one of my favorite features. We actually have a webinar on it later this month because I love this so much. But I can see how many USB devices were attached to it. What were the email accounts? Who was the last person that logged into the machine? Did they ever talk to Cortana? You know, different things like that. That's all in triage before you even like dig into the file system. And I think people forget that. You can really mm -hmm. learn a lot about someone just by going through that data. It's more than you're probably going to get if you do that initial jump into the file system. So I step back a little bit, triage. Um, so that's my computer tidbit. Uh, for mobile, I think my big tidbit there is to understand your chips and understand what data you can get from that. Because I know people always wish they could do physical imaging, yeah. but doing it through the actual firmware itself is not possible really. It's just not how firmwares are rolling and I don't think they're gonna change. So understand the chips that your phone has and then try to do a chip dump. That's not a chip off. So we're not desoldering. This is all through software. You can get a ton of additional data that way that you're not getting through your logical image. You just have to try. We try to make it super easy because you've got um, the set driver packs and things like that. I've got a couple of cool websites. You can actually look up the chips, but it's amazing. Google will tell you they're full of information. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's an extra step in your process that's so worth it. And people just don't do that extra little step. It's not that much extra time. And at least then, you know, you did it. I take my 
burden of proof obligation very seriously because I do do consulting work. I do about mm -hmm. one day a month um, and I do all of our pro bono work because uh, we do a bunch of pro bono work for people who have had tragedy in their lives. I help a lot of uh, people who are being stalked, things like that. And I always make sure I'm following the same procedures that I recommend to other people because then I know I'm doing the best job possible. So yeah. that was my, I cool. on my little soapbox. I'm off now. <laughs> <laughs> so what other areas um, now, obviously people don't know a lot about um, in um, especially drones, right? We still hear here a, a million questions about about drones what what is uh what's e3's capability with drones so we have two areas that you have capabilities you can a, a drone goes to an integrating hub a smartphone is really an integrating hub for most of the iot devices out there so when you think mm -hmm. yeah fitness bands smart watches it's it's technically called an integrating hub and the data ends up on that integrating hub. So we process the DJI drone data off of the smartphone and you get all of that um, parsed out nicely. So it's, oh, it's nice. very easy to deal with. The other side of it is you can do uh, chip dumps off of them as well. So you end up with a bin file and you could process those bin files as well. And those are just two perspectives on the same piece of evidence. And it's, again, it's kind of very similar to that smartphone that it's like, I'm going to do a logical image and then I'm going to do a chip dump of it. And it's just taking that perspective because sadly devices, I keep using my Fitbit as an example here, which is the only IOT thing I have on right now. Mm -hmm. um, you can connect it in, you charge it in your computer, but at the end of the day, you can't image it that way. And you're not going to get a dump off it because it's not as smart as you think it is. It's going to adjust the transceiver back to something smarter. But I was in a car accident a couple of years ago and I was unconscious when I went through the guardrails. Um, it was a very scary moment. And um, obviously going through the guardrails uh, woke me up, but I don't know why I was unconscious. So we had to do a bunch of tests and things. But I had to gather the evidence for what happened because... I one, I want to know. I'm a forensic person. I have right. to know. You're doing your own I was. exam, essentially, right? <laughs> I totally was. And this was one of my primary pieces of evidence because it told me how fast I was going. I was going 71.8 oh. miles per hour. The speed limit was 70. So it wasn't that I was speeding or anything like that. But I started there. And then I did an activity timeline off of my device to show that I obviously wasn't on my phone. I wasn't a distracted driver. I was mm -hmm. unconscious. Um, and I actually had, they have a little teeny Amazon Alexa. She's like this big. She's like the small version. Um, yeah. I used her in my car because she goes into your um, you know, 120 volt adapter thing in your car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she reads, She's so I have hands free. So she'll read my audiobooks, et cetera, nice. and so forth. And she was running. So I caught the disconnection point from that because that's one of the first things that happens in a vehicle impact. I was able to put all the evidence together and present it because I live in the state of Virginia. And everyone in the state of Virginia, mm. when you are in an accident, no matter what happens, you get a ticket. Mm. Everyone. It, like it's zero exceptions. It's a part of being in the Commonwealth. And so I have a lawyer and we went through the whole process. And part of it was, I'm like, this is what happened. And I put together a timeline. This is, you know, this is what I can tell from the digital devices. And he was all impressed. He had no idea. <laughs> so you can hire us later. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, no, because he's like, hey, this is amazing. You can put all this together. And he's like, because the car was uh, totally destroyed. Um, it was mm. a red pill. Without the insurance. So you really <laughs> drove it like it was rented then. <laughs> no accident. Um, I'm glad you're okay. First <laughs> off, let me, before I go cracking jokes, yeah, I get all kinds of tears on, on Twitter. I had, a big, I had a big life moment there that I, I'm also very glad because I, it was, <laughs> it was completely total. The airbags did not go off. It was very surprising. I don't know if I would have made it had the airbags gone off. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So wow. weird stuff. 
So you were able to gather your own case and get your own name cleared from your tools. That's yes. Great. It's like yeah. worth it. <laughs> 20 years. Oh, yeah, worth it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. yeah. That's phenomenal. So um along with uh so we're talking IoT devices, drones, yeah. mobile, computer. Have I missed anything? Yeah. I've been out of it so freaking <laughs> long at this point. You know, oh, good old telepathy. telepathy. Email and cloud. No telepathy. Oh, cloud. Yeah. Email and cloud. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big cloud advocate, especially now. You think with the current uh, situation where everyone's kind of remote working and everything else, cloud has been huge. I Like I said, I live in Virginia and... Um, it's something like 80% of the U.S. cloud is physically located here in Virginia. You can walk through wow. or walk through neighborhoods, drive through, and it looks like a whole bunch of buildings that look like huge computer cases. I don't know if that's how they design them in the first place, <laughs> but you know, it's just a huge infrastructure of cloud. And um, I said this a year ago that this is where our investigations are moving, and you really have to be prepared because you don't work in the cloud and then bring the data down locally because when you work in the cloud obviously the things you pay for or is that data going from a to b that costs money and they're not going to waive it just because you're doing forensics yeah. nope. <laughs> nope. they charge you and so you take you know three terabytes from here and you take it to here that's very illogical and so our concept is that when you work in cloud you live in the cloud too and it's that connection point between two different cloud environments that really allow you to do that investigation. I obviously talk with my hands too. So uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep them keep them down and make sit on them. But yeah. I'm standing. So I have a standing desk with I my was camera. Like playing with my pen and all kinds of stuff earlier. So now I get it. So you got yeah, cloud capabilities as well. That's pretty uh, that's pretty awesome. How long how long has the cloud platform been out in, in E3? It's been out a little while. Um we do the basics of the cloud. So you can do like uh ah, actually that's in the free version is Facebook Cloud. You can do it in the free version. But really uh, yeah, yeah, we gave it away free. So um, I can Gmail. go to your site, download the free version mm -hmm. and do and Facebook. Do Facebook. Nice. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. Um and yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was when um, we're putting out this quarter. Um, I'll probably I'll probably do it the very first part of July, just because of Fourth of July, I push it back a little bit. But we're doing our big release that will actually deal with AWS, Azure, and the larger scale Google Cloud. So big cloud, not low cloud. Oh yeah, yeah, no mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. So, wow, and we're looking for that in in July then. Yeah, first week of July, first ish week because um, ish. Yeah. Development cycles. Yeah. That it's <laughs> half a week. And so it will be that I think I'm shooting for about the 7th of July. It's my uh, Mimi's birthday. So I figured I'll do a release. Awesome. That's, that's really awesome. So we've covered PFIC, right? Yeah. We've covered E3. Um, we've covered the cheese, which yeah. I don't know if we lost anyone in the cheese part. Maybe we should lead yeah. with the, the, the title stuff and not, and come back later with it, but I have uh, recipes to share. People, you just have to ask. <laughs> and obviously, uh, your social media, you 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 post that stuff. <laughs> um, so follow her on social media, just LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you know, companies on Facebook. So go look. There's all yeah. kinds of uh, stuff that goes out there um, on those. I'm a huge dog mom too, so I. I have my own homemade dog biscuit recipes. I'll share. Now the speakers don't get those for speaking. No, right? <laughs> they're, they're not <laughs> to you, but my dogs love them. <laughs> yeah, that would. Um, oh, Megan does have a question. So <laughs> she's asking, what kind of dogs do you have? I have two Siberian Huskies and I have two miniature Dotsons. <laughs> and and you will you will see them if you follow her. She's like, yes, she's in chat now. I see. <laughs> so very cool. So if there's any other questions, I forgot. Thank you, Megan, for asking a question, reminding me that that feature is down there. I forget that it's there. Feel free to ask. Also, if you're brave, we have the ability to bring you up onto quote unquote the virtual stage. 
Um, and we probably should have brought Megan up to ask that question. That would have been cool. Um, and you can ask a question. Just be polite is all I ask. <laughs> this, uh, so you can come up and ask a question. If you want to do that, uh, there's a setup. Do it. Virtual Smackdown. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Um, I don't have that link uh, available. It's um, <laughs> hold on. I think it's crowdcast.io forward slash setup. Oh, because oh, everyone's going to do that. Yeah. I'm guessing. I don't know. There used to be, I thought there was a button at some point. I think there is. I'm just not finding it because I'm a, I'm a twit like this. Um, yeah, no, here it is. Setup page. I, I'm afraid. Yep. Nope. That's what it is. I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to repost it uh, just in case someone wants to go for it. There, that's the more proper URL. URL. It's under, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a, it yeah. says get audio video help. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I didn't really know what to expect when I hit that. Someone to pop up and go, yes, can I help you? <laughs> like, no, I'm, I'm live. Get off my screen. Well, it's um, good to do new things. It's always positive. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anything that you wanted to cover that I, I may have missed? Because um, it's we're just casually talking and, and hanging out. And uh, if yeah. if we end the broadcast, then I have to go back and do work. And work. I, I know. I have, I have work to do. <laughs> not feeling it yet. <laughs> I don't think people realize... Um, uh, so I started my day today with uh, talking to a group of entrepreneurs uh, mm -hmm. because I don't know we're all out there, <laughs> and um, it's those of you who might be uh, have started a lab or you're looking to start one. Um, again, we're part of a community, so we've all mm -hmm. run businesses. Um, I run one. Uh, Kevin runs one. So it's. It's good to ask questions uh, because you never know when you're going to have one of those like, hey, what happens with this? I share like all my documents because the only people I don't like giving money to ever is lawyers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like every NDA on the planet is the exact same. So I'd rather just share it and then you just adjust it for your, your local zone. Because let's be That's serious. Right. Pay a lawyer for that. Um, I do love my lawyer, but I I don't want to give him extra money for silly things. So I always share my documents and things like that so people can just adjust them. I have like a cloud consent document that's worked well. Law enforcement could probably adjust it and they have free lawyers. Nice. We should do a, just a whole cast on a starting your own forensic <laughs> lab. If you're up for it, we'll get it scheduled yeah. and then go out. Cause these are still fairly new, right? We, we started this obviously for the, the the Corona thing, but if you want to come back on and, and chat about how you can help people do that. Yeah, I'd be happy to, because I really think that's a big deal for, for people to understand if they don't, I've helped a couple people out there um, get their labs started and get offering as a business because there's more than enough work. It's not a question <laughs> of lack of work yeah. out there. Um, even now, I think there's going to be a big insurgence after Corona of people that are sadly getting divorces or um, That's, other things. That sad. I know. Uh, I've had a couple of colleagues that I know that they're like, my wife just said I have to leave, but we're in quarantine. So I'm not sure where I'm supposed to leave. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I don't even think of any of that angle yeah. of things. It's like, you know, you, you hear about the. The domestic violence stuff going up. Yeah, you know, I was a cop up. 15 years and I'm like, why didn't you like? Because they're not leaving. They're home. Yeah. I mean, I, anyway, different story. Yeah. I guess, I guess I, I picked a good one. Either that or she just tolerates my nonsense. I think that's more of what it is that uh, my wife just like, oh gosh, there he goes. No, my husband tolerates me as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, Megan has a question, which Megan, I'm going to bring you up on uh on oh. stage to ask it here so hold on let me it's like crap i have to cut my hair try oh, to fine. find this all right good as long as you're good with it megan i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna try this again invite to on the screen yes i am sure i want to invite megan up on the screen sorry i'm reading my prompts to you as i as they pop up on my screen so she should be appearing somewhere i don't know if it's i i haven't seen it yet yeah, it'll pop up. It shows she's accepted and connecting currently. Hey, there she is. Oh, there's Megan. To get in. That's yeah. okay, though. 
million, million clicks. Yes, I agree to sign my life away. Yes, you can use my name. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <we> <laughs> Oh, yes, you can form. have my soul. Like, <laughs> sure, excellent. I don't have a soul, so I need a soul. <laughs> yeah. Never have souls. There you go. I yeah, to, part. to me, I'm in the middle, so I can just mm -hmm. pass the soul over here. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, soul <laughs> there you go. I'm sorry. I'm having fun with Crowdcast at this point. All right, Megan, you had a question. Yeah, I had a question. Not of, related uh, to anything that's been talked about. And oh. it's Perfect. So yeah, go ahead. Ask away. What is your favorite iteration of Star Trek? Oh, I hear you are a Trekkie. I am a huge Trekkie, everyone. So mm. <laughs> to the point that one of my Siberian Huskies is named Khan. Yes. And it's, it's so we could scream out at him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are not familiar, then you know what kind of nerd I am. <laughs> so I'm actually going to go. So if you, since we all have binge time lately, if you do not have a CBS All Access um, account, you can get first mm -hmm. season of Discovery off of uh, Amazon Prime, I think, or is it on Netflix? So one of the two. Um, I love Discovery. I think it's fantastic. I love the last season more because it has um, Captain Pike in it. And this is showing what kind of nerd I am. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, I'm tracking you right there yeah. the whole way. So I love having Captain Pike in it. Um, I also loved Picard. I actually really enjoyed it. He was my favorite captain. With now Captain Pike is my second favorite, um, who is played by Anson Mount. I had the pleasure before Corona happened of meeting him and meeting a couple of the other actors on my uh, Star Trek cruise. Yes, there is a whole cruise. Star Trek, not just one, but they run two in the month of January, right? No, don't they? they? It was in March this year. Oh, was it in March? Okay. And now they only run one because it's a bigger boat. Um, but <laughs> I did get to meet uh, a few <laughs> actors, and it was kind of cool. But I was a huge fan of Anson Mount on Hell on Wheels, and because uh, he was Bohannon, which I also love a good western. So it's kind of, I guess, it's space western versus yes. like old school western. So yeah. But yeah, now for all of us to do this instead of shaking hands. That's right. <laughs> and that's perfect now, right? Absolutely yeah. perfect now. And, you know, I'm with you. So, I mean, I have Star Trek uh, beer, right? Which someone told me I should have drank it, but I didn't. Oh, I just, well, I just couldn't it, open it at this point. I'm like, well, now I definitely don't. It's been sitting here about two years now. I don't want to open it now. But when I first got it, uh, so I'm... I bought Picard wine for my husband for his um, Christmas present. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so very cool. We're not in my office. We're in my studio. But in my office, I ah. actually have a Klingon bat lift hanging on my wall that's weapons grade. So um, <laughs> you can take it off and you can actually slice apples through the air with my bat lift. It's so fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> that is amazing. But yeah. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, without getting too much information. I never like to give too much information about someone on on your depending on your level of comfort, but you've named family members after uh, characters uh -huh. on, on Star Trek. Yeah. No, so, people people know um one of my sons is uh, named McCoy. Uh, he's out there in social. He's given up his privacy. He's okay. Kind of All right. I I always want to check first. Uh, you you just never know across <laughs> that that line. I, I'm right with you. My son's named uh, Riker after Commander Riker. Just I just got to teach him the Riker maneuver at some point. So when he's tall enough to actually get over a back of a chair, he'll be he'll be good. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, kudos to. That's to pretty you. cool. You win, you win bonus points for attending. Are you gonna build a hollow deck for him to practice though? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You have yeah. to. Why the technology? I yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a developer. I'm going to rely on people who I know, hint, hint, to maybe, you know, develop it and just not call it E3 anymore. Call it, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. forensics on the holodeck, you know, forget it. It's like a minority report, right? Where he was like moving all that stuff around and forensics. There you go. So we did that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Last year, we made our first AR application for a different group. And it was, you were getting, you wore these glasses. I don't have them with me because 
I do like them though. And you can manipulate things in front of you and it gives you all the instructions for it. Awesome. Yeah. It was super cool. It was a fun project to do. And I'm now trying to figure out how I can do it for forensics because how cool would it be to walk around with AR glasses getting training or something? I don't know. That'd be I'll, super I'll awesome. Do it. Do it. So, yeah. That'd be so cool. I'm in. Whatever training. I don't care what it is. AR? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's just super cool. <laughs> what is it? It's okay. So I don't care. Let's do it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I could see it if I was still in law enforcement. I, you know, I can see it now trying to justify to the sergeant or the lieutenant saying, what are you got to wear that thing on your, on your head for? <laughs> it's, it's, it's learning. I, I mean, we're glasses are pretty normal. They're actually not. Are super they? Yeah. They're, so they're, they feel like relatively the, close. It's not it's like not the, the big VR that. Oculus riff or nothing like that. Yeah. It's, because this is AR, it's augmented reality. Oh, not augmented versus the virtual. Gotcha. My brain even processed. I'm just so, I'm thinking holodeck. Forget the even glasses yeah. altogether. Let's just do <laughs> force fields. You and, the best step is to start with AR because you right. didn't walk around and function. Like you can still work on your computer while you're seeing all the heads up display. That's so. awesome. I'm yeah. excited. I'm waiting for you to release that now. And <laughs> so, so now is everyone. Uh, so there it is. It's like, gee, I can hear the buzz now. Paraben's got to release that. <laughs> uh, I do think it's an, we are researching it for forensics. Same with VR. Because um, I think there's a lot. Very happening. cool. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Thank you. And Megan, see what you stirred up. There was a two-part question to this, though, wasn't there? I hit it. No, that months. was just me trying to. Oh, test yeah. my own knowledge, which is actually quite limited. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm lucky I remember I was like, enough to like ask this. I also have my Doctor Who. I am a super very good. It's, it's just about every type of sci-fi thing you can imagine: Battlestar That's... Galactica, Star Wars as well. Yeah, yeah I know my you guys are... office is littered with Star Wars things. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, but I know Megan normally has a Millennium Falcon there somewhere. It's. Where is it? My shoulders for you. It's right there. there. <laughs> and I have one here. Yeah. And a ghost and a stormtrooper mug to hold my hand. <laughs> and I know, see, we're all just nerds. I mean, I know, I just realized it's right there on my screen. There's part of the stormtrooper uh, helmet there. It's actually on my desk and you're seeing the reflection. <laughs> we yes. just need to forget I talking about to forensics to from now on. We're just going to talk about the nerd. In my office, so what? I have Darth Vader, Star Wars, Barbie. Yes, actual cool. Barbie brand or yes, the collector. I have that next to my Wonder Woman Barbie. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Super cool. And I also have the Chewbacca mask where you can like talk and it goes. Oh. Oh, Chewbacca, <laughs> what was a Chewbacca lady? That was one of my. I I laughed so hard. I forgot about laughing. that. Oh, oh yeah, I, I pull it out just in case I'm bored during COVID. We could do the next one where we all wear those. And we're like, oh, I'd right? laugh the whole time. Yes. I'd never make it. <laughs> My dogs do not like it. They're definitely not into the Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd see them jump up on, on screen. That's phenomenal. Well, Megan, thank you for You're the welcome. question. And that uh, that was fun. Uh, thank you for that too. I'm gonna slide you back down because I'm of looking course. at uh, the the time, and I want to be respectful of everyone's uh, 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 moments here. And for uh, figure sure. if I can slide you back down again. Thank you. That was a great question. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the. I mean, got all excited when I start talking nerd stuff. Bring yeah, it. Chewbacca is also a ginger, so I have to appreciate that. Very true, and my yeah. absolutely son's favorite character. Um, he's granted, he's only four, mind you, but yeah. we're starting, we're starting him off right, but he's got that cross thing going on. He's named after star Trek, loves star Wars, but he'll get there. But when they thought, uh, <laughs> the scene where Chewbacca was on the transport, right. And the last one, uh, and yeah. they, I thought he died. My son, he, he wanted to go see this at four. I didn't oh. think there's, I didn't oh. think there's any way he's going to make it through a movie theater that long. And he's glued to the screen eyes wide like this. And he's staring and when he thought Chewbacca died, he just starts crying right in the middle. I'm like, shh, <laughs> right there in uh, in the movie. So it was great. Oh my, I, I had the same moment. I was like, they did not do that. I'm like, Disney, we're breaking up if this happened. What's going on? I know. I know. Spoiler alerts here big time. I don't have to put spoiler alert in here for just in case. No, because if they haven't seen it by now, they're not a true fan. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Too bad. So Too bad. Sorry. 
Like, like, Fuck it, whatever. Yeah, that's right. Han Solo in the other one, Chewbacca in this one. I would have written them off for sure. Uh, that, that sorry, not it. sorry. That was no. nice. Yeah, nope. <laughs> Hashtag Team Smuggler is gone. No, not happening. <laughs> I, we could have a whole thing just about movies. I love my entertainment. I love my movies. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, Amber, thank you so much oh, for making this such a fun uh, interview. It uh, always is. So I appreciate uh, the time you gave us today and everyone else make sure that you check out. And I still have obviously E3s and I don't know if this button stays in the, in the replay. That's the question. So I'll make sure I put some stuff in chat too. So it, it, it does stay. So if you're looking for all of those links that I was talking about, I'll make sure I, I throw them in whichever side I'm on chat. So you guys have them. Um, and if they need to get a hold of Amber, you can just go to her website, uh, paraben.com, and she's got a chat feature right there because I am actually looking at the website in another tab, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's right there. If you need to get a hold of her, it's like, people. How? it's like, it's what's the people? What's it's that? Sorry, it's not a bot, it is not. That's right. it, oh my it, gosh, it, yeah. I have a funny story if you want to listen to it one last time, and I'm and, uh, familiar with it. I, I have actually a video of the bots, and I hate them. Uh, with a passion, I think you. Yeah, I don't like that. And it's gr awesome that yours is live. You go there and you're like, "There's a person, right? There's mm -hmm. no no bots." It's funny. I, I went to test drive a car uh, last week, just last week, and the uh, the bot uh, said, "Hey, when do you want to come?" And I said, "Today. Let's. I'll come to test drive it today." And it was at 3 p.m. And she said, "Okay, how does 12 p.m. sound?" I'm like. <laughs> It nope. sounds great. If I could time travel, I'd be happy to be there at that time. <laughs> I actually took it in and showed the sales guy. I'm like, hey, um, your lead gen system, not so good. Someone has a bug. Yeah. Bot bug. Bot bug. Have I said bug? My my oh, no. studio light went out. Boop. I'm like, that's got a massive battery on it, too. And it was fully charged. That's so weird. Look how big that battery is. Oh, it is. Battery's dead. Look at that. I was like, perhaps we are magic. Yeah. Not right. That thing's heavy. I got to set it down on the floor. <laughs> stand it's on is like massive. But uh, actually, the light is not as bad this way. But again, thank you very much. I, yeah, I, I appreciate it. So if you guys need to reach out, go and talk to the real person on her website, oh. not not the bot, and uh, and reach out to him. Yep, oh, wonderful. Yep. Hey, again, thank you. And uh, everyone else, take care. Oh. We'll see you guys. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Love it.